starts each day at sunup. The road sweep teams go out. Marine combat engineers trained for trouble, ready to answer the emergency call. The Marine rifleman is as important as he ever was, but in this new kind of war, it takes more than guns and guts to get you through. The war in Vietnam is like no other we've ever fought. The enemy isn't up there spread out along a well-defined perimeter. It's all around you, everywhere. Sniping by day, mining roads by night. Before the trucks and supplies can travel, the roads must be cleared of mines by sweep teams with combat engineers. That's why these Marines are out at the crack of dawn. You see, Charlie Kong is a regular little mole. He likes to dig holes and put all sorts of lethal hardware in them in an attempt to disrupt the Marines' flow of supplies and traffic. So far this morning, it's been quiet. Up front, there is a team of two. One man operates the detector. It's sensitive enough to spot a dime buried two feet underground. Sooner or later, it's bound to find one of Charlie's nightly calling cards. Like now. The other member of the team goes into action. He's been watching everything, and now he probes the road with his bayonet. It may turn out to be just a half-buried tin can, or other stray pieces of metal. This one, however, is the real McCoy, a VC box mine of the old classic style. Plenty of nails holding it together. The detector can pick up one like this with no trouble at all. But they're not all that easy. Further down the road, the team comes face to face with another problem. Vietnamese civilians. Lots of times they're hard to figure. Charlie can be anywhere. So ID cards are checked. This bunch check out, so the search goes on. Everybody keeps his eyes peeled all the time, never knowing when a sniper's going to turn up. If one does, all of a sudden, you're a rifleman. The morning goes on, and the probing continues, checking out the smallest metallic particles hidden beneath the surface of the road. But not every mine can be picked up on the detector. That's why keen eyesight and memory are so important. The engineers know this road. They've made this trip a dozen or more times. And yet, somehow it's always different. Up ahead, there's a spot of freshly turned earth that was not there yesterday. The detector is quiet. The observer comes up. He begins to probe very gently and strikes pay dirt. But there wasn't a whisper on the detector. Charlie's found out how mines made of metal pick up. So he replaces the nails and hardware with string and fishing line. That's why when the chips are down, you've got to rely on the keen vision of the observer. 
That's just one of many touchy situations Marine combat engineers come across all the time. For instance, an unexploded artillery shell. The VC make booby traps out of them, so it has to go. After checking the shell out, a half-pound block of C4 is placed on top of it. Then, once they're sure the area is clear, the fuse is lit. Getting rid of one like that before it does any damage can go a long way toward making a combat engineer's day. Chow, whether it's out of the can or off the grill, is always welcome. It gives a Marine a chance to catch his breath and shoot the breeze with his buddies. Some of this talk, naturally, is shop talk concerning a lot of things that engineers do. All the housekeeping chores, the construction work, building barracks, mess halls, division CPs, pouring cement, filling sandbags, erecting buildings, and making new roads through the jungle, clearing areas below the DMZ. They've had to solve a rough water problem, too. Troops and machines need water. Southeast Asia is loaded with it, but it's got to be purified. So marine engineers have to set up water points to ensure the presence of pure water when it's needed. And how many trees have these engineers blasted, carving out landing zones to put marines where the enemy doesn't expect them? Some engineers take to the air to spot possible enemy ambush sites, blown bridges, or any other obstacle that may delay the Rough Rider truck convoys. All these things are part of the routine of being a Marine Corps engineer and make for lively chow time discussion. After chow, some of these engineers will be off to finish the repair of a blown bridge. Charlie's just as good at wrecking bridges as he is at laying mines. The quickest way to reopen a vital traffic route is to set up a pontoon bridge. But that's only a temporary measure. You've still got the job of fixing the main bridge. This usually means pile dragging. It's an operation that takes teamwork on land and in the water. And finally, the bridge is back in working order again. Objects in the river are taken under fire. Charlie is also in the floating mine business. Continuing their mission, the road sweep unit we've been following runs into some action. These Marines have drawn fire from the vicinity of a village. As they continue to move, the situation gets pretty hot. Guns have zeroed in. Ready? Next, aerial support arrives and helps immobilize the enemy. The platoon is now free to move on into the village. make it in without any trouble. 
the man who greets them seems friendly, but they take no chances. Every possible place of concealment is carefully checked. Then the call of engineers up comes down from the other side of the village. The riflemen have captured two VC who were holed up in a tunnel. Their hiding place has to be destroyed to deny its use to Charlie's comrades. It's another job. Once the charge is set, the cry of fire in the hole is passed along the line and the Marines take cover. 